Welcome to episode two of Module 8's Non-Infectious Disease and Disorders. We're continuing on with inquiry question one, how is an organism's internal environment maintained in response to a changing external environment? The syllabus reference, investigate the various mechanisms used by organisms to maintain their internal environment with tolerance limits, including internal coordination systems that allow homeostasis to be maintained, including hormones and neural pathways. The learning intentions, describe the function of the nervous system, interpret an action potential graph, describe the function of the endocrine system. The nervous system has two main parts, central nervous system, which is composed of the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system that is comprised of all other nerves throughout the body that are not part of the system. The central nervous system is integral to the maintain, maintenance of homeostasis. The brain is the main control centre of the body, but within the brain is a small area called the hypothalamus, which is the control centre for the regulation of the many activities in the body that are required to maintain a stable internal environment. It achieves this by directing effectors to carry out a response by either sending messages via neural or chemical pathways. Some of the conditions that need to be regulated are heart rate, body temperature, and blood pressure. The hypothalamus is the main link between the nervous and the endocrine system. The spinal cord has two main functions, to conduct a pathway for nerve impulses from the receptors around the body to the brain. The millions of units that make up the nervous system are called nerve cells or neurons. There are no two neurons that are exactly alike, However, they all contain three common structures. A cell body that contains a nucleus and many of the cells found in other cells. Fine branching extensions called dendrites that are extensions of the cytoplasm of the cell body. Dendrites receive messages in the form of impulses from other axons and conduct these towards the cell body. A very long and single extension of the cytoplasm of the cell body is called the axon. Axons can double body. Neurons are classified according to their function and the direct are carried. Sensory neurons carry impulses from the sensory cells to the CNS. Motor neurons transform messages from the CNS effectors such as muscles or glands. And interneurons are located within the CNS and are the link between the sensory and motor neurons. Electrochemical impulses include a change in the electrical potential of the cell membrane of the axon. This temporary change is known as an action potential. This action potential is brought about due to the change in the concentration of the electrically charged chemicals called ions, electrical pulse. A neuron is said to be at rest if it is not transmitting any electrical chemical messages. The resting potential millivolts. When a stimulus is detected by a neuron, it causes sodium channels in the cell membrane to open. Because there is less sodium ions outside the neuron than there is inside, the charge is then reduced. If a stimulus is strong enough, sodium channels will open to allow more sodium ions to move into the neuron and then change the resting potential to a threshold value of 55 millivolts. This will result in the cell membrane becoming more positive inside the cell than outside and move beyond a zero millivolt potential. To counteract this, potassium channels will open to allow potassium ions to move out of the repolarization. The potassium will stay open until the action potential returns 70 millivolts. The endocrine system, along with the nervous system, regulate the activity of the body. Its main components are hormones, which is within the body. The pituitary gland is known as the master gland and is involved in secreting a number of hormones that can affect many organs, such as reproductive organs, the thyroid and the adrenal glands. For example, it will secrete a hormone called ADH that targets the kidneys to help regulate water in the body. Other major organs or glands that are important to know are the pancreas, which we already know from the first video, is involved in secreting insulin or glycogen to maintain blood sugar levels. 
The adrenal glands, which are located on the kidneys, are involved in secreting adrenaline, which activates our fly or fight response, stress hormone. Let's summarise the characteristics of the nervous and endocrine system. While they both work together to maintain homeostasis, they each have distinguishing features, such as how they send messages, action potential for nervous and hormones for endocrine, and how they transmit these messages, electrical impulses for nervous and chemical messages for endocrine. And that's the end of episode two. Thank you for watching.